Chapter 10 Nursing a Patient at Home Have you ever felt utterly helpless because you did not know what to do when someone in your home was ill? How you wished you could help? Perhaps you have never had an opportunity to know anything about caring for a patient. Or maybe you have been afraid you might do the wrong thing. There is no reason feel this way. Any normally intelligent person can learn the simple rules of home nursing in a short time. Sickness and accidents are only too common wherever we are. Serious emergencies may turn your own home into a temporary hospital at any time. Or it may be a case of minor illness such as influenza. Are you prepared to meet such exigencies? If not, this is a good time to begin. Principles to keep in mind. Do not allow yourself to become confused. Do what has to be done in an ordinary manner, without undue fuss or haste. Wise planning will save considerable time in the end. If necessary, call on another member of the family to help you. But remember, only one person must be in charge of all the sick care given in the home. That person may be you. This is the time for you to show your good organizing ability. You must be prepared to carry out your duties in a sensible manner under the direction of your doctor. Arranging the patient's room. The arrangement of the patient's room will make a great deal of difference to his comfort and well-being. Remember, this will be his little world while he is sick. Therefore, be sure to make it cheerful and attractive at all times. The room should be bright and airy in the daytime, but the patient's eyes should always be shielded from glare. A quiet atmosphere is important when one is recovering from. 78. Nursing a patient at home. Any illness. Avoid anything that causes irritation to the one who is sick. Privacy may help him make a more rapid recovery. Be sure the room is well ventilated during the warmer times of the day. Doors and windows should be screened to keep out flies and other pests. If the patient's bed is a long way from the bathroom, it may be wise to move him to some room nearer the toilet facilities. This will make the nursing care that much easier, and it will be more convenient for him when he is able to get up and care for himself. Be sure he has plenty of fresh air, but do not let him become chilled by cold drafts which could delay recovery. To make nursing care more easy and convenient, the bed should stand at just the right height. Modern beds are usually made low for the sake of appearance, but this often makes nursing care more difficult. In such cases you might consider renting a hospital bed. If that is not possible, try to raise the bed to the proper height by placing wooden blocks under each leg. Bore a shallow hole in the top of the block, as shown in the drawing, so the caster will fit into it firmly. Be sure the bed is perfectly steady. Elderly and nervous patients need to feel secure, even in bed. Furniture you will need. A suitable bedside table is convenient for the patient, allowing him to do things for himself. Place a small lounge chair beside the bed for visitors. Such a chair may also be used by the patient when he is allowed out of bed. Reading lamps should be well shaded to avoid glare and prevent eye strain. Patients should not have to face a bright window, for this may bring on a headache. Draw the curtains during the hottest times of the day, but throw them open during the evening, especially in warmer weather. It is well to provide the patient with some type of call bell. A spoon and an empty glass may serve quite well for some short illness. A small radio also helps to pass time more quickly. If the furniture has polished surfaces, protect them from stain. Ing and marking. Even plain water may spoil a highly finished tabletop. Rubbing alcohol may do even more damage. Most liquid medicines contain small quantities of alcohol and other solvents. Use waterproof plastic material for protecting surfaces. Keeping the patient cheerful 79. Little things mean a lot. Keep the room clean and tidy at all times. Remember, little things often tend to annoy a sick person. An orderly room will help him feel better and may aid in his recovery. Be sure the room is cleaned every day. Raising a lot of dust may interfere with the patient's breathing. Use a mop and avoid unnecessary bustle and noise. Don't fuss over the patient. If he wishes to talk, encourage him to do so. 
Don't be surprised if some patient seeks relief in tears excisionally. This is perfectly normal during certain illnesses. Let the patient give vent to his feelings. This often helps relieve nervous tension. If he seems depressed, talk about something cheerful. This will lift him up from discouragement. Avoid all morbid, discouraging thoughts as much as possible. A cheerful spirit will ease the pain and relieve his discomfort. Avoid confusion. There is no greater test of your natural ability than when you are caring for a sick loved one. The more carefully you plan your work, the easier it will be. Do not become careless. Always put things away in their right places where you can find them when they are needed again. By all means avoid confusion, not only in the patient's room, but also in your own mind. A well-planned program will enable you to accomplish far more than you may now realize. In more serious cases of illness, the doctor will explain what must be done. You will soon find you can carry out most of these simple procedures, such as giving medicines at the right time and in the correct amounts. Try to keep some kind of record showing the patient's temperature, pulse, respiration, and medicines he has had, and whether he is feeling better or not. Do this two or three times a day according to the type of illness, and as suggested by the doctor. Bed linen should be changed frequently and so should the patient's sleeping gown, especially if he has a fever and is perspiring a lot. Keep all insects and vermin out of the room as much as possible. Various types of spray can be used for this purpose. Remember, insects may bring germs to the patient, or perhaps carry germs to other people. A clean, well-ordered room will attract fewer insects. 80. Nursing a patient at home. Making your own equipment. Proper equipment is always necessary to good nursing care, but this can be rather expensive. If you cannot afford to buy these things, here are a few suggestions on how to make your own equipment. One patient's dresser. This can easily be made using a few small boxes. Stand these on end and nail several boards across the top of them. Drape some light material over the front of the boxes. Shelves inside the boxes can added for storing articles needed in caring for the patient. Two bedside table. Select a large box or paper carton. Cover it with suitable colored paper or other material that will look attractive and place it beside the bed. Three bed table. This is very useful at mealtimes, and also when the patient can sit up and care for himself. You might secure an old car table. Saw the legs off, so that it will stand about one foot high. This table can then be placed across the bed to hold the patient's tray while he is eating. If you do not have a card table, try making a suitable bed table from a large carton. Cut out parts of three sides so that it forms a table about 12 inches high. This can then be placed on the bed above the patient's knees to hold his tray. Another simple method is to stretch an ironing board, or a leaf from a dining table, across chairs placed on either side of the bed. This will serve well for a short illness. Four wet-shaped cushions are very useful in propping a patient up in bed. These are available in most areas today. Another method is to cut a large cardboard carton diagonally across, placing this behind the patient for support. See page 82. Five handy paper bag. Waste materials, such as tissue handkerchiefs and cleansing tissues, are often a problem to the patient. Pin a medium-sized paper bag in a handy place beside the bed, where he can dispose of these tissues easily, without contaminating himself or the bed. Other simple methods will no doubt come to mind as you care for a sick person at home. You will soon find ways of solving most of your problems by using the furniture and materials you have around the house. Remember, it's not so much the type of equipment you have, as the kind of person you are that really counts in caring for someone who is ill. If you are kind and understanding you will. Making the patient comfortable 81. 82. Nursing a patient at home. Become a good nurse, with all the satisfaction of helping another back to health. Making a comfortable bed. A sick person's bed is his small island while he is ill. Careful thought must be given to keeping him comfortable. Most hospital beds are firm, giving good support to the patient's back. 
beds at home are often soft and may sag in the middle, thus giving little or no support to the back. Soft beds are not good for any patient who must spend days or weeks recovering from some prolonged illness. So be sure the patient's bed is comfortable and firm. Take a good look at the springs. If they are weak and tend to sag in places, put a sheet of plywood or a wide board between the springs and the the patient's bed 83. Mattress under the area where the patient lies most of the time. This board should be at least 4 feet long and 2 feet wide to give proper support to the patient's back. If the mattress is lumpy, have it renovated, or the secure another. Hair mattresses and foam rubber mattresses are better for a patient who must remain in bed for a long time. But be sure to protect the mattress with some type of cover which can be easily laundered. Bed sheets should be large enough to be tucked in on all sides. However, be sure the patient's feet are not bound down under the upper sheet. This may cause pain and trouble in the feet and legs. Put a small box or a roll of blanket between the patient's feet and against. At the same time it will hold the sheet away from his toes. Blankets for the sick room should be light for easy laundering. Those made of part wool and part cotton are best for this purpose. It is good plan to secure a strip of rubber sheeting about a yard wide and two yards long to protect the mattress. Lay the rubber sheet across the middle of the bed and then cover this with a draw sheet, which is an ordinary sheet folded double, and laid crosswise across the middle of the bed. The draw sheet adds to the patient's comfort, and makes it easier to keep the rest of the bed smooth and clean. Change the patient's position at least every hour more frequently if the doctor so advises. This helps to prevent bed sores developing on the patient's back because of too much pressure over. 84. Nursing a patient at home. Long periods of time. Apply rubbing alcohol to the back and legs at least twice each day. This increases the circulation to these areas and cleanses the skin. But be careful how you do this, for the skin may be tender and easily broken. In rubbing the patient's back and limbs, use long, even strokes, applied lightly to all areas. Helping himself. The patient should be encouraged to help himself as much as possible. By placing his feet firmly on the mattress, he can often help to lift his own weight. You might attach a small overhead bar, or trapeze, above the bed. Even a rope attached to a hook in the wall will serve the purpose of giving him something to grip to help himself more easily. Cleansing the mouth is most important during an illness. As much as possible, let the patient do this for himself. If he cannot brush his own teeth, you may have to help him. Proper oral cleanliness is essential in patients suffering from a stroke or heart attack. If the tongue is badly coated, use a mixture of glycerin and lemon juice to cleanse the mouth and tongue. This should be done after each meal. Bathing the patient. Every morning, unless the doctor orders otherwise, thoroughly wash the patient all over. This will improve the circulation and help him feel better. It will also remove any secretions that may have accumulated on the skin during the night. To bathe the bed patient one needs. 1. A basin of comfortably warm water. 2. Soap. 3. A washcloth or washing mitten. 4. A towel, preferably of the Turkish or terry cloth type. If you are right-handed, stand at the patient's right side. Place the basin of water and the soap on a small table or a chair just to your right. Take the towel and spread it under the part you are about to wash, to catch any drops of water that may escape from your washcloth. Now you may begin by bathing first the face, ears, and neck. Then do the arms, chest, hands, abdomen, back, legs, thighs, and finally the genital areas. Change the water several times during the bath. Wash each part thoroughly and then dry with the towel. Keep the The patient's appearance 85. Rest of the patient's body covered as much as possible, lest he become chilled. After bathing, apply a little plain talcum powder to all parts of the skin. This will prevent irritation and give a pleasant, refreshing feeling all over. Brush and comb the patient's hair each morning. Note the condition of the scalp and perhaps apply some commercial hair tonic to give a feeling of freshness. 
let a male patient shave himself, if at all possible. Appearance means so much, especially to a lady patient. Encourage her by providing an attractive bed jacket. Let her wear a ribbon or a pretty flower in her hair. When you have finished, perhaps you can turn on some suitable music on the radio. This will make your own work lighter, and the patient will be happier and more content. Taking the temperature. A slight elevation of the temperature, or fever, could be the first indication of trouble arising from infection or injury some. 86 Nursing a patient at home. Where in the body. Fever is often the body's cry for help a distress signal that must not be ignored. To check the temperature one must have a clinical thermometer. This little glass tube has a silver bulb at one end, containing a silvery metal called mercury, which is liquid at ordinary room temperatures. The normal temperature is 98.60 F, but may be slightly higher in some people and lower in others. To take the patient's temperature, hold the thermometer firmly at the upper end, away from the silver bulb. Shake the thermometer vigorously up and down until the little column of mercury drops to about 92 degrees. Now place the bulb of the thermometer under the patient's tongue. Close his mouth gently, and leave the thermometer there for at least 3 minutes. Now take it out, and slowly rotate the thermometer between the tips of your fingers. If you watch carefully, you will see that the column of mercury has moved up the tube to some point, perhaps to 100 O or more. Always write down the temperature and the time at which you have taken it. This will be useful to the doctor when he comes to see the patient. Temperature, pulse, respiration 87. Pulse. Now you must learn how to take the pulse. Gently lay the tips of your fingers along the edge of the patient's wrist near the thumb. Press just firmly enough to feel the bounding pulse under the tips of your fingers. Note the quality of the pulse, whether it is regular or irregular, and also whether it feels weak or strong. All of this is important to the doctor. If you have a watch with a second hand, count the pulse for one full minute and write this down. The normal pulse of an adult should be somewhere between 70 and 90 per minute. However, in a fever, it may go up to 120 or more. The pulse of young children may be over 100 and still normal. Respiration After counting the pulse, quietly notice how often the patient breathes. You can do this by watching the chest as it expands. Count. 88 Nursing a patient at home. This for one full minute and write down the results. The normal rate of breathing is between 15 to 20 a minute. If the patient is getting short of breath, prop him up in bed, using several pillows. If he is nervous, and if his breathing is irregular, you should notify the doctor at once. Rapid breathing may indicate some real crisis, such as a failing heart. On the other hand, a shallow sighing type of breathing may be due to depression, or perhaps to some hidden anxiety. Handling a sick child Nursing a sick child often requires more skill and understanding than caring for an adult. The mind of a child works differently. He has no experience to guide him. Childhood illnesses are usually dramatic, and in most cases there is a high fever with vomiting and pain. A sick child is naturally afraid, even if you have told him he will be well again in a few days. The Sick Child 89 Every child has highly active imagination, which becomes even more sensitive when he is sick. You must be careful not to increase his fears. Children have heard adults tell tales about illness and death, including all the harrowing details. This sort of exaggeration is always to the detriment of the child. Then when he becomes ill, and his imagination is already working over time, he may be almost scared to death. Therefore, try to keep him calm and quiet. Fortunately, nature is kind to young children. Most of their illnesses last only a few days at most. One minute they seem half dead. The next thing you know they are up and running around as if nothing had happened. Except in certain crippling diseases such as rheumatic fever, they rarely have to stay in bed for long. Young children often come down with a high fever. 
the trouble may be due to some infection in the ear, nose, or throat. Unless properly treated, even a cold may result in some really serious complication, such as severe tonsillitis, Bright's disease of the kidney, chronic bronchitis, or even deafness due to an infection of the middle ear. Be sure to call the doctor early in the day. Don't wait till midnight, merely hoping for the best. Remember, the earlier the doctor is called, the better for the child and also for yourself. A young child does not have the reserve energies of an adult. He can go downhill very rapidly with certain types of infection. Don't take a chance. Call the doctor early. Don't scare the child. Meanwhile, don't scare the child with foolish threats. Build up his confidence by telling him the truth. Perhaps the doctor will have to give him an injection. If so, be sure to set a good example yourself. Don't cringe when the doctor opens his bag. The child may be watching to see how you react in this emergency. If you are calm and cheerful, he will try to follow your example. All children like to be considered as heroes. Don't pamper your child when he is sick. If he has to have an injection, tell him it will hurt a little, but that he will soon be better. Help him to act like a grown-up. Do not make a simple illness seem too important. If your child gets too much attention, he may prefer to remain sick. Try to be sensible in your own attitude. Give him reason to be confident in you and also in the doctor. 90. Nursing a patient at home. Should he have visitors? Be careful about visitors, especially when a child is sick. Even close friends and relatives should only be allowed in the room a few minutes at a time. Do not allow strangers to see a sick child. They usually talk too much and are easily misunderstood by him. He will recover faster without a lot of visitors. All children love flowers and growing plants. You can help him to see the beauties of nature, and the time will pass more easily. Point out how the buds gradually open out into lovely flowers. He will thus be learning even while he is sick. A few simple pictures of animals and nature scenes will appeal to a child's mind. Change them frequently, for children quickly tire of seeing the same thing. Help the child to enjoy these things, but don't spoil him. Speak calmly and quietly in his presence. Talk about cheerful things and avoid all morbid discussions. If the child seems afraid, encourage him to talk and express his fears. Listen quietly to what he says, for it is very important for you to know what he is really thinking. Just the mere fact of bringing his fears out into the open will help him to see how foolish most of them actually are. Never make fun of him. Do not whisper in the presence of a sick child. Remember he is already afraid, and your whispering will only increase his fears. He may begin to wonder if he is going to die. If you have to hold a discussion, do so in another room. Then return to him as quickly as you can, bringing some little present that he will appreciate. This may save you having to explain what you have been talking about. Reading is beneficial. All children love stories as soon as they are old enough to understand ordinary conversation. Your child will appreciate hearing your own voice far more than programs on the radio, although these are very useful at times. The young child's mind should be allowed to dwell on good stories that are true to life. Such stories should have cheerful endings, and should be easy for a child of his age to understand. He may want to hear some favorite story over and over again. If it is of the right kind, it will help him.